Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create your own button styles. So let me get, go ahead and create a very simple button with the default style that we have. So if I have button and I'll say, let's say press me, and I can go ahead and say button style, and you can see that this style is of type primitive button style. So if I say button style, I can go through this and I can say automatic, bordered, bordered prominent, borderless, plain, and so on. But you can actually create your own styles also. All right, so there is nothing stopping you from creating your own styles. And the reason that you will create your own style is that maybe you are you know, working on a much larger app and you want to share those styles with the rest of the application. So instead of creating or building view modifiers like this, like saying something like this, shadow, whatever, shadow button or shadow something, uh, we can just create styles. So I can go over here and I can say shadow. Now, there is no such thing as shadow, but that is something that we can build. And it looks nicer over here. And also it's much easier to reuse in your application because it's one of the styles. So how do we create these custom button styles. So let's uh, start. And I'm just gonna give you a very simple example of a shadow button style, but it's up to you. I mean, you can create any kind of a button style that you want. And you should probably create this in a different file, but I want to share the code with you. So that's why I'm giving you all of this stuff in the same file. So I'll start with calling this shadow button style. And the whole idea behind shadow button style is to just provide a shadow to our button. That's it. I'm going to be using the protocol or conforming to the protocol button style. Now, when you conform to the button style protocol, uh, you do need to, you know, add some methods to it. And one of those methods is make body. All right. So make body is the one that where you will actually put the styles. And you will get also access to the configuration. And through the use of the configuration, you can access the underlying label. You can access the if the button is being pressed or not, and so on. So this is your opportunity to go ahead and you know change the style, whatever you want. So I'm going to say configuration.label. You can see this is a view that describes the effect of pressing the button. This is the view, all right? And we can add some padding to it. So let's go ahead and add some padding. And it will be a good idea to view this uh, shadow button style as we are building. So what I'm going to do is, there are multiple ways of using this. Uh, I can go over here and say, button over here, press me. And I can say, button style. And I can simply pass in the shadow button style, all right? Now you might be wondering, wait, shouldn't we be passing dot shadow? Yeah, yeah, we will pass out shadow. So don't worry too much about that right now. Uh, we will extend our you know button style and add a different, like a static property of shadow. But right now, just focus on building the shadow button style. So you can see that I can now pass in my shadow button style, but it's really not much going on. But the good thing is that now I can see it in the preview so I can start working on it. All right, so let's go ahead and say background. Maybe in the background I can pass something, let's say white maybe, the color, but it's completely up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and pass in something else like red. There we go, you can see that it is working, right? So that's a good idea to use the previews. So I'm just gonna pass in white over here. Again, you can use corner radius or you know you can use, I think it's called clip shape. So we can say clip shape. And you can just clip any shape you want. I'm just going to say rounded rectangle with a corner radius, let's say whatever, 16. So this is where you will use your creativity to, to just create your own styles. All right. And now I can use shadow. I mean, there is already a view modifier shadow and I can use that. Now the shadow will be, will have color. And I can say that the configuration, if it's pressed, if the button is pressed, then we can actually use shadow color. So I don't really have any shadow color over here. 
So what I can do is I can create these properties like shadow color. All right, and I'll simply say shadow color is black. And similar to this one, we can actually have, have different properties like, you know, like the shadow radius, and we can also have shadow X, shadow Y, like the X direction of the shadow, the Y direction of the shadow, or not the direction, but the, the actual or origin, like the actual uh, location of the shadow. So now I can say configuration, if it's pressed, then we can go ahead and use something. We can say shadow color dot opacity, and we can say 0 0.4, all right? Now, in the other case, we can say the opacity can be a little bit different. So I'll say shadow color dot opacity uh, 0 0.8. But these are just values. I mean, you can play around with these values and that will be okay, all right? Next up, let's go ahead and say radius. Again, the radius will be the same thing. Uh, we're just gonna change the radius based on some calculation. So I'm just gonna add this over here. There we go. If it's pressed, then radius will be half or else the radius will be whatever the radius is. And next we can ask X, which will be shadow of X. And you can play around with these values for X and Y. It's basically just represent where the shadow is coming from. Uh, and there we go, shadow X, shadow Y, all right. Next up, we can create the scale effect. And you can already see, you see that? Let's press it. <clears throat> when you press it, you can see that it's giving us a different option over here. You can see that the opacity is going from 0 0.8 to 0 0.4. You can play around with the X and Y values. That's perfectly fine. And you can also add like a scale effect, all right? So it's going to, if it's pressed, it's going to be 0 0.95. So let's see. See that? It kind of now, now shows that it's you're pressing it. Scale effect simply means that you're scaling it and you're scaling it, the 1.0 is like a normal size, but you are not scaling it to 0 0.95. Now, if I go from 0 0.95, again, these are just the values that you can play around with, 0 0.5, wow, that's too small, right? So you don't really want to do that. So that's why you have to be very careful with these values. You have to play around with these values and how they look like. And with the animation also. So animation is very important because, you know, these kind of simple animations, you're going to see that they take all you know, they, they create really, really good effects. And the value for the animation will be configuration is pressed. So whenever you're pressing, it's that point we're gonna do the animation. So it's a very, you know, pretty small amount of things, subtle things, you can see that right there, if I press it, if I press it like really quickly, it does do like this, like really quickly. But if I hold it, see that? Really looks nice, thing. nice, right? Okay, so that's our shadow button style. And the good thing about the shadow button style is now you can actually share it with the rest of your team. It can be part of your styles. And other, one other thing that you should always do is instead of writing shadow button style like this, if you look at what styles are available, see that they just come up like this, bordered, border prominent. It will be nice if I can just say shadow, right? So how do we do that? Well, we will perform an extension on the button style. And where, not this where, but where, self is shadow button style. So over here, what we are doing is we are extending the button style. So what we're doing over here is we're creating an extension on the button style and where self, double equal to, is shadow button style. So this limits the extension to apply only when the conforming type is shadow button style. All right, and self over here, where you can see right there, self refers to the type that conforms to the button style. And the where, which we're putting it over here, clause ensures that the extension is only available when self is exactly shadow button style. All right, so when it is shadow button style, then this particular extension will be available to you, all right? So how can we apply it? 
I mean, what should we type over here? Like when we are applying this shadow button style? Well, this is the property name that you can give and you can actually give any name for your property. So it doesn't really matter what the name that you're giving. Just make sure that it is a static property var and I can say shadow, which will be a shadow button style. And what we are going to return is simply the shadow button style itself. All right. And now you can see that our preview is refreshing. It still works. It's the same exact thing and it still works the same way. But now it's a little bit more easier to write that. It's just writing shadow. So there you have it. We have created our button style and this gives you an opportunity to look at your application. And if you have a lot of different custom styles, then this is a really nice way of creating your button styles. And if you're working in a team, you are working on a large project, there's a good possibility that you may have a lot of different button styles, right? So you can create these button styles, put them in a different folder. If you're reusing them, then obviously put them in some sort of a package or a framework, and then we can reuse them. But this is a really good way of uh, making sure that you are sharing your button styles and all the button styles can be uh, you know, created in a similar fashion. So hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out adamsharp.school. adamsharp.school hosts one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. And we have close to like maybe 28 or 30 courses uh, with 160 hours of content. You can check out the amazing reviews from our students and you can sign up for a monthly plan or an annual plan. But right now, uh, there's a sale going on for the Black Friday. Now, this is the biggest sale of the year, and this is the only time of the year where the courses will be 50% off. Only it happens once a year. So you can use the code Black Friday 24 on any of these courses and get 50% off. But this particular deal is going to end November 30th, 30th. So make sure that you don't wait too long. Now, my personal favorite course right now is this one. I am currently building this course. And this is a 10 plus hour course. I think it's like 12 plus hour course. And it teaches you SIF UI integration with your custom ExpressJS Node.js server with a Postgres database. So this is a full stack application. We're building an e-commerce application and this is my personal favorite course. I'm actually working on it right now. So a lot of sections are available, but it's still a work in progress. You can see there's like a 12 plus hour content is already available. It just goes on and on forever. You can see that. And I still have to add a lot of different things. So updating user profiles, Stripe integration, and many more. All right. So this is a great course. If you want to become a full stack developer, you want to learn Express, you want to learn Postgres SQL, this is literally the best course in the market. Nothing even comes close. There is not even a course for full stack developer for, for Swift UI or iOS developer. This is it. Now, if you're looking for a Vapor course, if you want to stay in the world of iOS, then there's a course for that, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor. I also have a super base course. So I have a lot of courses. You can see this list just goes on and on forever. So again, Make sure that you take advantage of this deal, 50% off. It only happens once a year and November 30th, the deal is going to be over. So make sure you take advantage of this deal. Thank you so much.